Hello everyone, Vicki Ashard here with Nature's Best Art. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm going to be making this video. Uh, this is the first part of a two-part series. Uh, and this one is on my paints, palettes, brushes, and paper that I use uh, to do my watercolor paintings. Now next video will be uh, part two and I'll talk about my supplies and materials that I use uh, to do my paintings. Okay, so let's start out with the palettes. I'm going to bring this down and I want to show you my big palette. It's called a Jones palette and uh, it's a porcelain like surface on the interior. It has um, a top which is really nice and what I do is I make a swatch of all my colors and uh, the lines are uh, actually um, areas where I can actually add colors but these are the colors that I've been using uh, since I've been painting I did add about five of them that aren't um, M gram these are going to be mostly M gram paints uh, that I'm going to be showing you and I just love M. Graham professional paints because of the richness and the vibrancy of the colors uh, and um, so let's uh, open it up and I'll show you the back of this of which I use this is my uh, these are my two wells uh, big wells that I use for mixing and actually these are my Winsor & Newton um, uh, uh, student grade paints that I use to make my color chart. Some of you um, might have seen that um, uh, video, but uh, it, it's really nice because you know I needed the extra you know space uh, for things, so I use that. And then um, if you look at this uh, palette, uh, it has a wonderful mixing area, and also it has it has 32 spaces. Uh, or wells um, for your, your to put your paints and I what I have done is I, I have always um, put my um, browns together my earth tones yellows and oranges greens and then my blues and my uh, purples and my reds and I've really enjoyed painting uh, with those uh, like that so I'm gonna put this back on because I wanna uh, oh I wanted to show you something else too uh, this is pretty important to me what I do is I put um, a piece of masking tape along the sides uh, on each side and I put uh, the, the color of the paint that helps me too when I um, use my palette um, or I can, I can look on, on my swatch also and I, and I keep this um, with my color charts just so it keeps nice so um, I want to show you my M. Graham paint uh, that I've been using since I've been painting and that's been um, since uh, 2015 and you know they're two paints so uh, they come in uh, they're uh, 15 mil or five fluid ounces and I get them at Jerry's uh, Artorama online and I do want to talk about um, these two particularly the Elizabeth and Crimson, which has a light fast rating of three, and the permanent Elizabeth and Crimson, which has a light ra rate fa uh, light fast rating of two. So I did start out with the Elizabeth and Crimson, but if you know anything about light fast ratings, um, the light fast rating two is better than the light, light fast rating three. Um, so I'm glad they came out with the permanent Elizabeth and Crimson and I don't really use this uh, anymore. I use it for my card bases, um, not fine art, um, but uh, I do fine art, so I'm particularly interested in the light fast. Now the light fast, uh, what that means is um, how long uh, the paint will last uh, without fading. So, you know, you want a light fast rating of one, and most of these paints, in fact, almost uh, all of them except for my purple, uh, my purple is light fast rating of two, but all the others are light fast rating of one. And that means that it'll remain unchanged, uh, the paint uh, on your painting, for more than 100 years. So you don't have to worry about it fading. Oh, there's my birdie clock. <laughs> um, the light fast rating of two uh, means that it will remain um, unchanged uh, for up to 50 to 100 years. Now the light fast rating of three uh, uh, is, um, it's 15 to 50 years. So um, 
I, I learned this on, it's called handprint.com. You can read all about, uh, you know, if you're um, concerned about your light fast, if you do fine art painting. Of course, you never want to uh, use any paint that's considered fugitive. Um, that is probably the worst, um, you know, the, 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 uh, the paint that won't last. Um, it, it lasts, I read, 2 to 15 years, and so you want to stay away from that. Okay, so now um, the other um, palette that I just bought that I really like is called Pro Art Palette, and it opens up. It doesn't have a top. But it opens up and it closes, which is what you want, really. You don't want your paints to be exposed. And I did make a color swatch of all my paints. I did get the cerulean blue since I made that color chart with, uh, with in, my, in my video about the color charge. So I'm really glad. So that's not in rainbow order, but I do have these in rainbow order. There's 24 wells. Uh, my cerulean uh, blue is on the bottom because I just got it. And it's nice because, you know, if you want more colors, you can add. But... Um, I'll show you my color charts in a minute. Uh, so many colors I got from, from these. And this is the Winsor & Newton Student Grade. Um, and I'm really excited about them. The colors um, are the same, um, basically the same colors as M. Graham. And what I, why I wanted to get uh, paint, start painting with my uh, student grade paints and also my professional, I wanted to actually um, talk about that when I uh, teach people how to paint, that they can buy something, the professional kind, and get more richer, vibrant colors, um, but pay more money for that, for the professional. The student grade is more economical. Um, but I painted one painting with them, and I, I just uh, really love them. I think they're, they're going to be very nice um, to paint with. So I'm, I'm really excited to also um, suggest, you know, either one of those two paints. Uh, there's many, many other paints out there. You know, you just decide for yourself uh, what you like. But this is, you know, what I, what I uh, started out with. This palette is really nice because it has a um, handle on it. You can put your thumb uh, on it to paint with. Let's see, you'd go like that. Um, see, like that. Can you see that? And then this is for your plein air painting, you know, when you want to take it outside. Okay. Uh, the only thing about this uh, palette is I noticed it, uh, the paints really, they call it beat, beading up. Um, uh, it, see, it beads up instead of... Um, like this, you know, um, it's kind of hard to see where, you know, like what it would look like light and dark. Uh, that's why actually I made this color chart, um, the dark and the light, you can see the difference, you know, when you go to paint, if you're wondering about how, you know, before you put it on your painting. But um, they, you know, I have read that um, the more you use your palette, the less it'll do this. Um, so I, I just hope that it won't do it after a while, <laughs> um, and, but I, I really like it a lot. So I want to show you um, actually the paints and uh, those um, Winsor Newton paints. They're in here in my other um, nice container that I have. And uh, so uh, here they are, uh, and they come in tubes also, 8 mil. I got them at um, Cheap Joe's and also Jerry's, uh, or Dick Blick, I think it was. Um, um, so uh, I, I, I really uh, like them. Now, I want to just mention this. Uh, uh, oh, I want to tell you something about this, the CAD, the CAD um, Hughes. What I found out is that, uh, here's another one. Uh, let's see, uh, where's another one? That's not, here's one. Let's see, the alizarin crimson hue. If you notice, it has the name hue on the end of it. Uh, now, what I read was that um, on the uh, alizarin crimson and uh, the cad yellow hue, and there's a few other ones um, that I have. Uh, let me see, let me get that swatch here. Oh, the viridian hue also and uh, the cerulean blue hue they call it hues okay what that is all about is that um, uh, you can go on winsornewton.com and it's called spotlight on cad free colors uh, cad free alternatives uh, i believe there was a question on whether um, just like the cad yellow 
the uh, the uh, let's see, Alizarin and Crimson, and some of these other ones uh, were toxic. So uh, they came up with this uh, uh, a CAD-free alternative. So I just stayed away from you know like the Alizarin Crimson, and just got all the hues. Um, and so that's how I dealt with that. I just wanted to mention that. So, uh, oh, and this, this is the one I wanted to mention too. Now, um, I was going to actually, instead of um, anything else, because I had these wreaths um, a long time ago, many, many years ago, uh, hardly ever painted. You know, I just actually started painting six years ago. But um, so when on my Let's Paint series, I uh, started using this flesh tint uh, to make things a little lighter and some of the paintings. But you know, you can't buy this Reeves, um, these Reeves paints anymore. That's why I had to figure out um, what other kind of paints um, to use. So I came up with the, uh, I did, uh, you know, some research and I, and I liked what I heard about the Winsor & Newton Cotman student grade um, paints. These are also student grades. Um, so uh, I just want to let you know that if, if, if any of my paintings uh, call for the flesh tint, uh, to just use, uh, you know, to make it a little lighter a color, just use more water in, in the color. Um, uh, paint that I recommend uh, for the painting okay all right so let's see what else all right so those are my paints and um, I want to just talk a little bit about my um, uh, my color charts uh, that I um, that I made now this is uh, uh, the, the the Reeves color chart that I started to make uh, and was going to show you, um, but I ran out of the violet, and, and so I went online, and that's how I discovered that they don't even offer Reeves paints anymore, okay? So uh, they were nice. I thought they were nice. They're, they're very light, uh, not, not much pigment in them. They're a student grade, but I did like them. But, I, you know, I'm really glad, um, particularly now, that... Um, uh, I'm actually going to be using the Windsor and Newton. I think they're they're more uh, like my um, as far as the colors, um, you know, more like my my M Graham colors. Um, the pigment, however, uh, is 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 very very much lighter. What I did this is the 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 chart that we made together. So if you go on that video. Uh, it'll show you how to make this chart, and I did, like I say, add the cerulean blue. I'm glad that I um, actually found that. Um, now, uh, since that I made the color chart, I also made a color wheel, and one day I will um, show you how to make a color wheel and go into more detail about this. But this is the difference with the M Graham and the Windsor, the, you know, the professional M Graham two paints. Uh, compared to the uh, Windsor and Newton Cotman student grade. You can tell, you know, the difference in the, the vibrancy, the richness of the M. Grand um, the professional uh, compared to the Windsor and Newton Cotman student grade. But um, I, I think I'm going to like to paint with both, actually. I did make a painting. You, you might have um, seen it. It's my speed paint, um, Gathering Flowers paint uh, uh, painting that I did just recently. And um, what, what I think I'm going to like is I'm pretty heavy-handed. And if I use um, a lot of paint on my brush, sometimes I get my, um, my paintings too dark. And so my landscapes, I think so, some of my landscapes, I'm going to use the Windsor & Newton um, Cotman uh, student grade. Uh, just, you know, or maybe some flowers to, I don't know, particularly like if I want to do uh, like some pastel paintings. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and like I say, I'll go into uh, some detail about how I made these color wheels, but I think I'm going to really enjoy, um, you know, looking at these colors also. Uh, and, and this, I showed you this before. Um, uh, these are, all three of these are, are, are uh, my uh, color charts for my M. Graham paints. Uh, isn't it amazing how many paints that you can come up with uh, by just using, and, I'll, and I, you know, you can you can understand that better if you go, you know, on my uh, video 
the ones that I made for the Windsor Newton Cotman uh, watercolors. But um, I just wanted to mention this, that um, what I discovered, now these I made, uh, you know, when I first started painting, and so, you know, after a couple years rather, uh, you know, and so I didn't, I just made them all one color. What I think is better, you know, to, to do is to um, make your color charts dark and light so you can actually see, you know, the colors, um, what they look like dark and light. Okay, I just wanted to mention that. So, okay, that takes care of our palettes and uh, the paints. Uh, and so let's talk about our brushes next, okay? This is what I use um, to, I'm gonna take this paper down here, so I'm kinda, I'm kinda, there we go, that's better, okay. Or move this paper, rather, and show you. This is what I, um, uh, used to store my brushes in. It's uh, my wonderful basket that I love. I don't know where I got this. I think I got it at Myers um, a while ago and I was actually <laughs> going to give it to my daughter and then I thought, oh, well, gee, I kind of like it for my my um, my paintbrushes. Uh, so um, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm using it for that. So now um, I want to show you what I use most, okay? I, I love this because it separates my uh, brushes, you know, my types of brushes that I have. So these are the ones that I love the best. I absolutely love these. These are uh, Mimic Creative Mart. I got them at Jerry's Autorama, except this one, and I'll show you why I have this one in there. But let's talk a little bit about brushes, okay? Um, so now, these you can buy um, as a set, and it only has a certain amount. I can't remember which ones I got in the set, but it's economical, actually. You know, it'll save you a little bit of money to um, buy these brushes um, in a set. And then some of them I got individually. I got them at Jerry's Adorama online. Uh, this one, this two-inch uh, wash, I use uh, to put water on my whole painting. Uh, also, this one I use like for the sky areas. Um, it's a 30-inch round sky areas, and you know, dry it, and paint it, and dry it, and then use it for my landscaping area. You know, the grassy areas. Um, love that. Now, I'm actually, I just, I, I don't know if you actually could would say that, but I'm actually a round brush person. <laughs> I love painting with my round brushes. Absolutely love painting with my round brushes. Um, and, you know, I, I did um, hear, you know, a video one time of, of a, you know, he was a really good painter. He only painted with one size, one round brush. It was, it's amazing. But, you know, you could get a really fine point uh, in these. Um, and I just absolutely love them. They come in 12 inch, 10 inch, 8 inch, 6 inch, 4 inch, and 2 inch. Now, uh, with a little stiffer brush, uh, this is a Royal um, a Landnecker brush. Um, it's an acrylic, and sometimes I use this uh, for the eyes of birds, but um, I, I, I really enjoy uh, using these round brushes. Now, uh, I do love my liners, too. My liners are for, like, my grasses. Um, and uh, I love those. Now, this is a 2-inch liner, and this is a 1-inch rigger. Uh, and um, they're basically, it looks like they're basically the same. And I use them for the same um, things when I, when I paint, like my, my grasses. Or, you know, like um, uh, when I want to make um, my, the barks of my trees thin, uh, you know, in my landscape. And now these are called, uh, this here is called a flat. These are my flat brushes. And what, what these are good for is um, my side loading. When I um, put my uh, brush, my brush a little bit in this area here, in the paint, you know, that you have your wet brush and you put the paint um, in, in here just this on one side and then you, side loading is when you go down your paper, like for your, on your birch bark trees and you want to make that, um, the, the side gray, you know, there uh, and this side, you know, lighter. So uh, that's called side loading. So I love that. Uh, I also love these uh, to make lines uh, in my um, water when I paint. You know, you, you know, you can move it around and paint uh, your your highlights. You can get your uh, 
make make your highlights uh, in in your painting for, for the you know the water uh, by putting it in water and then you know you you, you uh, dry it just a little bit take some paint off and that'll make your your lines um, now I, I I have listened to an acrylic painter that uses just uh, these flats uh, actually she she uses just uh, basically that's what she uses it's amazing you know once you start painting uh, you know you'll come up with with what you like um, now these are called uh, filberts and what they are this is a half an inch and this is an inch now what what these are are a little rounded on this uh side si on the, both of the sides and uh so it's kind of like an oval shape and these are good like for making um different um strokes with your you know for your flowers and such and uh so i i've used those too but my favorite are the round now what I do suggest is that you make a sheet of paper, you know, you put your sheet of paper and you put um, how many rounds you have and the, and the uh, sizes of them, your liners, the riggers, the flats, the royal laying necker, which I put here, and, and, and the um, two inch, and whatever you use and, um, and when, whenever, whenever you put your brushes back, I recommend doing this because um, it's, it's kind of easy. You know, you'll you'll work sometimes with six brushes, and you know one will fall and hopefully not in the trash. Uh, and by the end of the day, you want to make sure you have um, you know the brushes, all the brushes uh, that you used, um, and, uh, and back in in uh, well, act, actually it's the next morning. But what I do is I I um, after I paint, I clean my brushes with water. I put them on my table and uh, make sure that I have exactly, you know, all the brushes that I, that I have. I do this, and then uh, the, next, then the next day I put my brushes back into this basket, um, still, and I still make, I make sure that I have, you know, I count my brushes, because, you know, you know brushes aren't, aren't cheap, you know, and, um, and it, you know, once you get attached to your brush, I'm kind of attached to my brushes, I tell you, I don't know. So um, anyway, so now let me see what else I can show you. So and I always keep this piece of paper in this section here. Um, what I started out with when I started painting was these. Um, uh, they're called Princeton Neptune, and I, they're nice brushes. They're really pretty, aren't they? The wood. Uh, it's an eight round and a six round, and I used them for quite a while. But then I, I discovered these, you know, the the Creative Mart, and I like these a little better because these hold a lot, a lot of water. And uh, what I might do is I might um, experiment them, experiment with them um, some more. But um, I don't use them much, really. Um, but I'd like to, to try again, actually. Now the other brush brushes that I use are let's see if I could find them. Okay, they're over here, and they are um, the uh, Lowell Cornell uh, brushes, and they have a point on them. See, the points. And what these are? Oh, this one doesn't have a point. This one does, and this one does. These are my two with the point. And what I do is I. Um, uh, you know scrape like for you know uh, veins and leaves with these but however you can't scrape uh, hard with these um, so a lot of times I will use a credit card scraper instead um, uh, but uh, th these have been nice for that okay this other one here this is called a uh, low Cornell Maxine's mop and um, it's a 3 8 inch I do want to find a smaller one also this was really hard to find I think I got it at Walmart um, one day I, I was looking around and I saw, I thought, oh my goodness, they have a low Cornell <laughs> Maxine's mop. I've been looking for them, but I don't know where you can find it, but that's where I think I found mine. And, um, but I do want to get a smaller one. What it is, is you can scrub uh, your um, paper a little bit. Um, and if you make a mistake um, on your watercolor painting, you can, you know, it, it's, it's kind of harder. It's, it's, it's um, harder than a lot of other brushes. Um, uh, and and so that works really well to use that to get your uh, like your mistakes um, out and next week I'll talk about that or not next week but next video my, my second part of the video uh, the materials um, and supplies that I use for painting um, I'll talk a little bit about 
how uh, how else you can um, get your mistakes out but anyway so I wanted to mention that now the brushes that I don't recommend you getting and these were my first ones that I um, ever bought I bought them at Michaels they are the artist uh, loft and you see how this actually the the paint or the, yeah actually it's the paint of the wood um, came off and I really I don't really keep my brushes in water um, but um, also to the ferrules see look at this the ferrule part um, it they come apart um, and I tried to glue them um, but they don't stay if you use them um, you know they're in my my basket I don't want to throw them out um, but I, I don't use them to paint with um, uh, so sorry to say uh, unfortunately but um, so that is uh, oh and then my here I want to mention my two fan brushes I love the two fan brushes for um, you know making grass uh, these are Robert Simmons uh, s48 fan uh, number two and oh my I can't even read this let me get my magnifying glass out let's see uh, this is uh, it's a 3 8 fan it's called E V E R T A I L and then slash A B A N I C O um, but anyway um, so uh, I, I just love these for, for my landscapes um, so what else I think that is it I think I mentioned everything else but I just uh, love the idea that I can um, just put this you know all my my uh, brushes in this basket and um, oh let's see um, the only thing is it would be nice to have you know like a uh, like a shelf above it so that it, they don't get a little dusty or something once in a while like you know if I don't use my brushes after you know for a while I'll go like that just to get the you know a little dust up you know I'm, I'm pretty fussy <laughs> so I don't know if they get really dusty or not but um, you know at, at first when I started to use that basket I did put the um, the, uh, the uh, uh, some paper on top you can do that I guess but I don't do that anymore so let's see we talked about the brushes we talked about the palettes, the paints. Are we done? Oh, oh no, the paper. <laughs> That's a very important part, right? You need paper to paint, right? Okay, let's get our paper out here. And um, so this is uh, what I started out with um, when I started painting the Strathmore watercolor. I didn't, however, start out with this brown. Um, uh, top it, it's actually it came in uh, yellow um, but I have um, since changed the brown uh, pad because I think it has a little bit more tooth to it uh, it's in this spiral type uh, thing so I just um, you know I just take my paper and I pull it out like that uh, it rips out now what I use this for is um, what I use here I'll show you um, I make these uh, panels I, I did uh, mention this in my card videos of um, four and a half by six and a half um, uh, panels for my card making and what I do is I use uh, paint that is left over in my palette uh, and uh, I you know I just um, get it all wet I, of course I take it off first and get it all wet and then I just start um, putting paint on and then I cut these for my um, cards um, because they they are a little uh, less expensive paper than what I'm going to actually show you uh, underneath here but um, so I don't actually use this you know paper for my paintings anymore I use them to make my swatch um, swatches for my my um, my paints that I have in my my two palettes and also um, I, I cut them and I uh, every time I make a painting I I'll make sure that I know what color uh, is in my uh, uh, is, that, is in my my paintings and I do and I talk about that when did I talk oh I talked about that when I made my color chart um, uh, I believe I believe video yeah so um, you can listen to that but anyway so um, so I like that for that now these this um, arches uh, 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 by the way this is uh, this is let's see it's a 140 pound cold press 
okay Strathmore watercolor and paper all right now this is a 140 pound cold press arches paper and uh, it's uh, 9 by 12 and uh, what this is good for is um, uh, it's for my 11 by 14 size uh, paintings uh, with a mat opening of seven and a half by ten and a half. Uh, now it's cold press, and this is my hot press. Now I just got this hot press this year, and why I bought this is because and it's 140 pound uh, uh, hot press. And why why I bought this is that uh, the hot press is smooth. Um, I don't know if you can. Uh, well, basically, can you see that smooth compared to? Let's see if you can see the difference. I don't know. This is a rough surface. Can you see that rough? I don't know if you can see that. But um, wonderful for landscapes. Um, all the paintings actually that I have done for flowers. Um, now this is, uh, I heard is nice to use for flowers, the hot press, because you know, it's a, the, um, the, um, that's not rough. And I probably will try that. But what I really want, bought this for is, um, I make uh, newborn portraits. And um, I, I thought that would be really nice uh, to use because it's it's smooth. Um, and uh, so I guess what you can do is remember, uh, if you want to, um, this way is that, you know, when you iron, you know, it smooths things out, hot, hot, hot pressed. <laughs> it's smooth, okay, the paper will be smooth. The cold press has, you know, a tooth to it, uh, it's, it's rougher. Uh, okay, so that's what I like to use for, for my uh, 11 by 14 um, paintings. And then this uh, is my, uh, let's see, it's pretty big. You can see all of it in here. If I turn it, you won't be able to see it, but, or I won't be able to actually show it to you. But um, this is, let's see, how can I explain this? Okay, this is for my 16 by 20 um, paintings. Now, uh, let's see, it's with a mat opening of uh, 10 and a half by 14 and a half. And um, so, um, and this is, this is uh, my, my uh, cold press, my 140 pound cold press. Okay, and I, and I love this, um, actually. It's, it's, it's expensive, and, but I do love quality paper. Um, I, I just, I just do. Now this is called a um, arches uh, block, okay? So I'm going to turn this over and show you. And I came apart for some reason. I don't know, but it usually it, it's um, it's 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 I don't know if the adhesive came off of this or not. But it's usually just on here. And um, what this is is see, it's all together. When you buy it, it's all together. Um, and so you know, unlike the other kind where you know you buy this and you open it up. This is an open. Here I can show you on this this one. Um, so you open it up and then you just take, you know, and, and you take your paper off uh, carefully like this. Okay, but on this, it's a block. It's on a block and you can't rip it off. So what you, what I've done is actually I took a, a butter knife that we don't use in our kitchen and see this area right in there? I'm going to put my knife in there to show you how to do this. Um, and then I won't actually do it because I'm not going to use the paper. But see, you just slide it and it'll uh, take that right off very easily. And you just go down the other side and all along this side and like that side and it'll take it off. Now the reason a lot of people like to um, paint on uh, with the blocks, uh, however I don't. Um, um, uh, but I, I, I like to use a lot of water, a lot of paint, and sometimes what I have found is that it buckled, and also I was concerned about the paint getting on the other, um, other, other side. You know, what, what you do is you're supposed to paint, and before you, let me explain this, before you take this off, you're supposed to, a lot of people use this just to paint on it first, and then they take it off, okay? <laughs> that makes more sense, okay, sorry. But anyway, so, um, but what I found is, I don't know, I, I was just, I think a long time ago, I, uh, some paint got on the back part of it, I don't know. I just did not care to paint with it. So I have it, you know, uh, and, I, and I will, I'll, I'll paint with it, maybe my, 
maybe the I because I won't throw this paper out of course I, I, I love the arches but um, so what I'll probably do is um, maybe paint some paintings um, that won't require um, you know a tremendous amount of paint like I'm pretty heavy-handed like I say so I gotta watch that when I when I use this the arches but what the paints I wanted to tell you the paints that I use the, the M gram paints um, gives these colors um, you know I want to show you like like this beautiful rich color uh, and vibrant this is a, this is this is with paint painted with my M gram paints and uh, just love uh, using M gram uh, and then you know like that and then then the, this is another one that I painted with my with M Graham uh, this is called mom's delight and uh, then my new uh, Christmas card for this year is called uh, warm holiday greetings and that was with M Graham paints so I just I just love the vibrant the richness of these but I did want to show you that this I painted this is the Windsor Newton one that I painted, uh, you know, with my uh, Winsor Newton paints, and this was my speed painting. That sorry, you know, the speed painting, it, it was 30 minute long speed painting. Well, from now on, I'll make, like, if I make a speed paint uh, video, I am going to make like, you know, this, this painting took quite a while because I think the detail of the flowers uh, and the bike, but um, <laughs> I told my husband, I says, next time I make a speed paint, it'll be like a uh, a one or two hour painting that we can you know speed paint it up and it won't be 30 minute <laughs> long speed paint sorry about that but uh, you can see me paint this from um, from the beginning to the end but anyway this was the um, Winsor & Newton uh, Cotman student grade so I thought this was very very uh, you know the paints I just love love the colors so um, uh, I was really thrilled about that and so now next week um, I will, uh, or next week, I keep saying next week, uh, next video, um, I'll talk about um, how I uh, actually put my paintings, you know, on my uh, foam boards, um, uh, the, you know, when I start painting, you know, the drawing, um, and I'll talk about other materials like masking fluid, uh, I will, um, uh, tell you about you know what pencil that I use to draw with uh, you know all those other materials you know I'll talk about sponges um, anything and everything that uh, I have used to help me uh, make these uh, just just these wonderful paintings I mean I can say they're wonderful because uh, you know it's a learning process and you know when you start out uh, you know it might not look so wonderful but I you know you will get to, uh, you know your own way of painting um, I can show you how I uh, painted and um, uh, you know and what I learned and then uh, you know one day you'll just uh, you know you'll just uh, say oh wow you know I've, I'm developing I'm learning <laughs> I think it, I think you'll be so excited uh, to to learn how to paint. I, I think it's a wonderful um, wonderful uh, pastime. I just I just love uh, painting. So and I'd like to share everything I know with you. So I hope you will join me in the next video. I hope you will give this a thumbs up and share this with your friends. Um, and uh, maybe it'll help someone um, really make their day and just uh, you know give them a purpose. Give them um, some joy in their life so um uh, so until next time happy creating